All the links to the original posts are linked in the description. So now let's start the video. Mess with my kids? Lose your house. I've been 50 got two stepsons, who I just call my sons as I've been in their life since they eight and 10 and are now young men. My wife and I made it a point to have a great relationship with their dad, Jason, and made sure he had a chance to be around as much as possible, even staying at our place frequently to be around his boys as he lived over an hour away and couldn't afford to live closer. Jason had a crazy ex-GF who had tried to claim they were married variously saying common law or that they were married in secret or married on an Indian reservation. But he had a restraining order out against her because she was nuts and had tried various ways to screw up his life. The ex is a horrible person. She had been arrested several times for forgery and fraud. She and Jason had a fiery relationship, but he had it in his head that he should make it work as he did like her daughters and grandson. But the ex got him sent to prison for violating his probation when he left the county to go to his mom's funeral and hadn't filed an appropriate form. I'm a little unclear on this part, but she played a major role in it. After he got out several months later, she wanted him back, and he wasn't having it. He made a clean break, moved to a new town, but she continued to harass him, thus leading to the restraining order. She would send texts to people pretending to be police investigating saying he was drunk driving or taking drugs or pretending to be friends familiar to spread rumors and hurt him. She even sent texts to my kids from burner phones, pretending to be other family or friends, saying awful things about their dad. Jason died unexpectedly of a heart attack, and it was a shock to all of us. He was finally living in peace, had great relationships with friends and his sons, and was the happiest he had ever been. He didn't have much. He lived in a single wide trailer a friend had let him stay in for free some boxes of tools, old comics, video games, D&D &D books and modules, mementos from his times in the Marines, and an old 29 pickup, which, on several occasions, he had promised my oldest son, let's call him Paul. Jason didn't have a will, and my wife became the executor of the estate because at the time of death, both the sons were minors and sole heirs. We packed up the things out of Jason's trailer and took the truck, which had Jason's name on the title, but had to wait for the death certificate to read out it in Paul's name. But the ex called Jason's sister demanding the truck saying it was hers and posting on FB she was reporting it as stolen, etc., which really pissed me off. After we got the death certificate, we went to the DMV and found out that she had stolen the title to the truck by forgery saying she was the only heir and we couldn't transfer the title. My son was driving around with a packet documenting everything in case he was pulled over for driving a stolen vehicle. We had to get a lawyer and start a special process that took several months before a director at the DMV fixed it, and we were able to title the truck with the ex continuing to threaten and cause problems and made everyone miserable and cost us several thousand in legal fees. Early last year, we got through probate court. The ex never showed, in spite of saying that she was the wife and sole heir. The court declared the boys as the sole heirs and my wife as executor of the estate in their names. Instead of showing up, the ex sent an email to the court saying she couldn't make it because of work she doesn't have a job, and that Jason was never around his kids he didn't miss a single HS football game home or away, and never missed a home track meet, and that they were just leeching off his SSI for the back child support. She went on with a bunch of other non-relevant shit, just to trash my wife and sons, and pretty much said it didn't matter what the judge said that she should get everything. During this time, we found out that Jason's name was on the deed of the ex's house. In order to get a reduction in property taxes because of Jason's disabled veteran status, she had filed papers to put him on the deed, but not the mortgage. If she had just left my kids alone, we would have let it go. But she had pushed principal beyond the point of denial. So we filed suit for half the house property is worth about $380K. We went to court, ordered mediation and she rejected a mediated settlement of a fraction of the value, which we would have taken. In April, her lawyer dropped her, and so she got a continuance on the first hearing. She then claimed that she had found a will from Jason designating her as sole heir, in addition to another signed paper that she found as a quitclaim deed from Jason for the house I did wonder if it was this or her not paying him which caused him to drop her. She was going to go back to probate court to reopen appeal. Probate and needed time for that which the judge granted. On Tuesday, finally went to court on the deed to the house. She no-showed. The judge had inquiries to the probate court, and she never filed any papers. The trial lasted less than 10 minutes as the judge recorded the facts and awarded the estate half the property. 
They will impanel three lawyers to determine how the property will be sold and she's going to lose her house and for the first time in her miserable life. Face the consequences of her actions. If you don't want to miss out on such stories, please consider subscribing to the channel.